Welcome everyone to Sunday morning's Bible study. And we continue on our journey through First Thessalonians, that chapter two, and we have already covered chapter one. And this morning is going to be a continuation of First Thessalonians chapter two as we look through the scripture and how it will relates to us as Christians and relates to our walk of faith. And I pray that this morning, nonetheless, will be that experience for you. Hopefully, if we do go through 30 minutes, there might be plus extra time. However, we'll try and get take or we'll keep the, the study itself within the 30-minute framework. But as usual, I'd like to always remind our, our listeners, those who are participating in the the Zoom that this is a dispensational premillennial study of scripture, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I just want to share with you this image here, courtesy of, of a brother in Christ, Scotty Clark, and the breakup of how the layout, dispensational layout of the scriptures is laid out. So we have the dispensation of promise where the book of Genesis right up to the law and Exodus and how the law goes right up to the cross of Calvary, followed by the book of Acts, which is a transitional book. The book of Acts and the book of Hebrews are transitional books. One, the book of Acts is coming from the nation of Israel to the church and the book of Hebrews going from the church into the tribulation. And so all the things concerning the Gospels related to Jesus Christ, his ministry to Israel, ministry to the circumcision, is in those four books. There is things for the church that are in there, but most of the scriptures, if we could put it and lay it out, is primarily geared to the nation of Israel. However, given that Paul was our apostle and we have been in the church age and Paul was given for the Gentiles, our doctrine and dispensation of the church is fixed and founded on Paul's ministry. And those 13 books from Romans to Philemon exact those things. And following the church age, when the church is caught out, we then enter into Daniel's 70th week and we enter into the dispensation of judgment. And that has to do with the nation of Israel and right through to the dispensation of the kingdom, the 1,000-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. So understanding those things is based on the very scripture of 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing, 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 dividing. It's so important to rightly divide the word of truth. And those divisions are very pertinent in our Understanding of scripture and our understanding of where we are, where we're going. As a church, as individuals, he will bless you mightily when you rightly divide the word of truth. So let's go to, to our study for this morning, First Thessalonians chapter 2. We're in chapter 2 this morning. And verses 8 to 13. And here are the words of scripture, because as we exposit it, we're going through verse by verse study and just looking at what blessings and what effective measures the Holy Spirit has for us this morning. So I hope the study this morning blesses you. So being affectionately desirous of you, verse 8, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto you, unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Verse 11, as you know how we exhorted 
and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that you would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Last verse for this morning. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, comma, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. And so let's begin our study as we exposit this and look at some of the scriptures that are very relevant for us today. Paul the Apostle, verse 8, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. So we have the gospel of God being preached. It's interesting that the gospel is or has many titles. The very gospel that Paul preaches has various titles. And yet there's another important element here. Because ye were dear unto us, the church of God, the body of Christ, was very dear to Paul. Paul's love for the church was deep and profound, given his apostleship and calling, which came by revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 1, you can read it there. His heart and love for the church, the body of Christ, is demonstrated in his letter, while in Ephesus, Acts chapter 20. The church of Ephesus was a strong church in doctrine. It shunned false doctrine and worked to extend the gospel of Christ. Paul's work in positioning the church of God came with stern warnings, rebuke, and appeal. And so what you're seeing in the church of Ephesus, that desire and profound love for the church that Paul had, it's the same message he's giving to the, the church there in the, Th the Thessalonians, the church in Thessalonica. So going back to the gospel of God and the titles, the same gospel Paul has, it's interesting because you can... Have a look at this, and this is Acts chapter 20. We're going to just quickly look at Paul's passion and Paul's love for the church. Acts chapter 20. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. That's self-explanatory. So that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So here we have an Thessalonians, the gospel of God, Paul calls his gospel, given to him, Galatians chapter 1, the gospel of the grace of God. It's interesting, I'll just quickly divert from here, because the different titles that go with Paul's gospel, the Pauline gospel of the grace of God has many titles, but the one gospel for this age, by which all are saved. What are the names of these titles for the one gospel? Well, you have already the first well, actually, there's two, the gospel of God and the gospel of the grace of God. But in Romans chapter 1, verse 1, 9 and 16, you've got Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. There's one. For God, verse 9, is my witness, whom I serve in, with my spirit in the gospel of his son. There's a, another title, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. In verse 16 of Romans 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's another title. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that title or those titles, a series of titles, is the same title for the one gospel that Paul preaches. And it's the gospel that we all have been saved by, every born-again Christian in the church age. Your gospel is not John chapter 3, 16, neither is it in Acts chapter 2. The gospel that you're saved by, if you are saved, is 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. The whole operation of the gospel, which I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. For today that's the gospel that saves us for today and so the very love that paul has for the church he's preaching the gospel but every single member of the body of christ is dear unto paul 
Verse 27 of Acts chapter 24, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul wished to impart to the church all the counsel of God because it's the kingdom of God. It was his ministry to the church. Take heed. Verse 28, here's the, the warning, stern warning that Paul gives to the church. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost, Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. There's the obligation and there's your duty for every Christian is to take heed to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. And that's the cost that God laid down for the church. For I know this, and speaking while he was in Ephesus, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of yourselves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So there's the warning given by the apostle to the church before his departure. And it's the same warning, same passion and love for the church of those who are in Thessalonica. And it's the same warning and love that Paul has for the church. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9, and we're here for ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, or laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. And so we've got this again. Paul is ensuring to the brethren, to the believers in Thess Thessalonica, to the church in Thessalonica, he's ensuring to them that we are accountable to you. We have given evidence of our accountability to you. We haven't come to you with any fraudulent ways. And Paul is pleading with the church that all these things had to do with our labor of love, our patience of hope, and the gospel that was being preached to the Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3, it says here, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father. And that's the work of a Christian. Now, the three elements of the Christian life, your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Galatians 6, verses 9 to 10, Paul really then emphasizes this very thing for the Christian. And let not us be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them that are of the household of faith, the body of Christ, everyone. You know, there was a song by Steve Green. I think he wrote a song called uh, Don't Let Another Wounded Soldier Die. And if there was ever a council or a command for us in the body of Christ today, particularly as we look in the body of Christ in the church today, how apostasy is becoming rampant and just the love is waxing cold amongst the brethren. We need to be part of that church of Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love, the church of forgiveness, where we are really replicating through the work of the Holy Spirit the love of Jesus Christ for each other in the body of Christ in the church, forgiving one another, bearing one another's burdens. This is the very work of the church. And it's, I think it's really echoes in those words of Jesus Christ by this shall that you know, or shall they know that ye are my disciples by your what? Love one another. So here Paul begins this very work with the Thessalonians. Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, verse 10. And this should be 10 to 13, uh, 8 to 13, sorry. Sorry about the text there. Verse 10, ye are witnesses in God also, how holy 
and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Again, there's that re-emphasis of how Paul and Silas and those that were there, the apostles and his co-workers, how they did not come to the church with fraudulent means or deceptive means to try and con or try and do in the believers. They came in justly, unblameably. They lived holily to be an example for the church among you that believe. And notice that there is no works there to you that believe. And that's the absolute characteristic hallmark of the church age. Believe. Believe because we are saved by grace through faith. It's not of works, not of works, not of works. The emphasis in this church age is believe. In verse 11, as you know how exalted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. That was Paul's position. He saw the church as his children and his obligation and love for the church was to nurture them in the spirit and to see them grow in the inner man. Hence, we see that in throughout all Pauline epistles, and especially in Pauline epistles, everyone, that the doctrine of the church resides in those 13 books of Pauline epistles. For sure, you can go all, all scripture is given by inspiration. But the very doctrines that we hold so dear as the body of Christ is in his letters, in his epistles. And throughout those epistles, you begin to understand that when you look at other things throughout the Old Testament, there is such richness as you realize that the church, the body of Christ, is the very focus today of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, because when the church is caught out at the rapture, God's focus then turns to his covenant people covenant people which is the nation of israel so they can be saved and they salvation has to come back to them given that they are the ones who hold the oracles of god hebrews chapter 8 so the scripture goes on to say as you know how we exhorted and comforted verse 11 and charged every one of you as a father doth his children that you would walk worthy of god who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Worthy of God. How is your walk with the Lord? How is your walk with God? And that walk of worthiness has comes down to what we've been speaking about time and time again, our walk of faith. How is faith acquired? How do we increase our faith? The scriptures are very clear. That faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word of God the word of God. The emphasis is over and over. Three times those words are spoken in Deuteronomy 8, Matthew chapter 4, verses 4, Luke chapter 4, verses 4. The man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we see that very clear. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 3. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. This is Paul speaking to you. When I beseech you, is that plead to the church, you that you walk, that you that you walk worthy of the vocation. A vocation is that job description wherewith ye are called with all loneliness and meekness. There's your loneliness and meekness, characteristics of a child of God who is in the word, who's now walking with the Lord. Because you know what? As you walk with the Lord, the pride that is in the flesh, in your in the flesh, that pride that's in every one of us, starts to break down as you begin to see more and more the gospel. As you begin to look upon the Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins, was buried and rose again, then the majesty of the gospel of the grace of God, you see for yourself that 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 hymn that was written by, I think it was Horatius Bonar. He wrote the hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. You begin to see that and you start walking in loneliness and meekness with long suffering, everyone, forbearing one another in love, 
endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, in the bond of peace. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's that real heart and soul of Paul longing that the church comes to this place. He desired that you might be filled with all knowledge of his will and all his wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord under all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Are you increasing in the knowledge of God? Start getting into his word. Strengthen with all might because the promises is there right there for you as a son of God, as a child of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power under all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing. Last verse for our study. Last verse for our study. Because when ye receive the word of God, let me just repeat that. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing. When ye receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which, what? Starts with this E, effectually, effectually, effectually worketh also in you that believe. And that's the promise of Thessalonians chapter 2, that the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. That's what God, the Holy Spirit, wants to empower you this morning with the word of God. Effectually means with intended effect thoroughly to all practical purposes in effect. Interesting, isn't it? And there's belief to you that believe. There's no works there. All God has asked you, nor Paul in his epistles asked you, is that you believe. And in, in believing the, the works and the your faith of works, all those things become the fruit of salvation and the fruit of walking by faith. Matthew chapter 8, 8 to 10. Let me just give you these last verses or verses I've put here. The centurion, the story of the centurion answered and said, Lord, and this is about the centurion that came to the Lord Jesus Christ. His daughter was sick. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Speak the word only. Psalm 25, verses 9, the meek will he guide in the judgment. The meek will he teach his way. In Isaiah 66, verses 2. For all those things hath mine hand made, and, to all, and all those things have, may, have been, saith the Lord. And here I've got in highlighted, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Trembleth at my word. That concludes our Sunday morning Bible study, everyone. I hope that that scripture and those scriptures have given you some food for thought and some comfort for the day. And I just hope that your Sunday is a blessing to you, to God's glory. And I hope to catch up with you next Sunday as we continue our journey through the First Thessalonians. Till then, God bless you and good day. Mm -hmm.